was a struggle, had to make it out the jungle. This is a show for you. Welcome to the hustle. Under pressure, never break a foe. Keep chasing your goals until you blow. Now, welcome to the hustle. Welcome, everybody. We're back to another episode of the Hustle Podcast with another female guest. Episode 12 over here. Or episode 11? I'm not even sure anymore, guys. 11, 11, 11. 11. There we go. So I want to welcome a very special guest, an amazing actor, a wonderful mother, and the most wonderful person to work with on set, Lisa McCormack. Thank welcome. you so much. That's such a welcome. Thank you. Welcome to the pod. Thank you. I'm very, very honored to be here. I always get excited when women come on the podcast. Right? Because I'm always around men, and it's like this table is just full of testosterone, so it's good to have some estrogen here. Right on. How are you feeling? <laughs> are, you, are you excited for this? You're a little nervous? Or? I'm both. I'm, I'm excited. I'm nervous. I you, know, you were telling me right before that this is the first time you're doing a interview podcast. So Yeah, actually, yeah. I, I don't know how interesting I am, so we'll see how we're much about to find out. <laughs> we'll we're see about how to find much out. content I'm pretty we can sure you have a lot of good things to say. I have Definitely. some stories. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, first, I wanted to say, uh, how was that nice trip that you just took down the coast? Oh my God, it was incredible. So we did a road trip with um, my three kids along the coast of Gaspé. We drove up nice. to Gaspé and Percy and then drove back down, hit Quebec City, That's and, a good drive. and then came. It was incredible. We did 3,155 kilometers. Sheesh. I actually copied her exact route. <laughs> I did half of it though. Yeah, it was it was intense, but it was awesome. Yeah. How awesome. long ago was this? This was like over the weekend or? Uh, we just came back. Like it's been a week since we've been home. So. And how is it? Do you miss, miss being on the road? I, I do, but it was exhausting. So I think by the end of the trip, we were all sort of tired of the nomadic life yeah. and sort of all longing for the comforts of home. For sure. But there's something that's really nice about breaking routine and just going to see different places you've never been and, and people that you've, you've never met. Mm -hmm. So. I think that was really nice after having not been able to do that for, for so long, yeah, to be able definitely. to go out and, and just see something new was was really exciting. Mm -hmm. Would you say there's like a lot of cultural differences between like Gaspé and like this part of Quebec? Is it like mad different? I've, I've never <laughs> I mean, been out that way. I, mad different. I don't, I don't know mad different, but what struck me most is the lack of cell service along the routes. Oh, really? There were a lot of places and I was like, do these people not have cell phones? Like, do they <laughs> not Google everything? That's, That's crazy. So, and my kids struggled a little bit with that. And then everything seemed to shut down. I was just speaking with Steve, yeah. who did the trip. Terrible. Everything shuts down <laughs> super early out there. Oh, really? So things were closing at like five o'clock, seven o'clock, eight o'clock. I went to in one of the hotels in, in Gas Bay. We were just looking for some sort of wire so we could plug our laptop into the TV because there's nothing to watch either. <laughs> so I went to the front desk. I was like, is there like a Canadian tire? Or a, and she, she was like... <laughs> It's six o'clock. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And she's like, everything closes at five. And, and like judging me, like I should have known that. And I was like, mm, you wouldn't happen to have a wire, right? And she's like, I don't even know what you're talking about. Go away. And I was like, okay, sorry. And so we just watched everything the on, the, on the laptop. Of traveling. That beautiful, uh, that, that beautiful <laughs> Quebec hospitality. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah, there it is. So we noticed those sort of differences, but people were pretty hospitable and, and you know, yeah, just just we went to a lot of smaller towns, so we're, we're used to like the hustle yeah, and bustle exactly. of, yeah. of sort of near Montreal and and not like the farm life and yeah. Yeah, yeah it's you good definitely to break uh, convinced me to head out there, hundred <laughs> <laughs> um, percent. So let's steer away from the the trip a little bit. Let me ask you. So you're an actress. I know he said actor. It's actress. It's actually actor. It is. And uh, Lisa, feel this one, please. Correct me if I'm wrong. I had a grade nine teacher who instilled in me that it's doctor and it's actor. We are we are all the same. Exactly. So, but the Academy Awards would argue because there's best actor and best actress. So I true. think it's just a question of preference. God damn it. You're what both you right. You're both right. <laughs> <laughs> I say I say actor. I typically say actor. But exactly. Yeah, I got censored for talking about gender last episode. So <laughs> I'm not saying shit. I'm good. I'm I told just, you they just want to censor no. you to censor you. Tech. <laughs> all right. But going we're back gonna, to what I was to saying, daily motion. <laughs> how long ago or when did you discover this passion for acting? Oh, goodness. So as soon as I, I realized that acting was a job and I was maybe four or five, uh, I was watching Mr. Dress Up and there was kid. I'm dating myself now. You probably, you probably don't know what Mr. Dress Up I is. Do. I remember Mr. Dress Up. I do. Come on. No. I'm too young for that. <laughs> 
I'm too young. Mr. Dress Up was fire. Yeah, it was it was a kids show back in back in our day that was like local and and fun. They had puppets and it was stupid. But there was kids on there, and I was like, how did those kids get there? And I was like, they're probably actors. And I was like, mm-hmm. like what is this actor? So actually, in my in my baby book, the first thing I wanted to be was a movie star on Mr. Dress Up. Nice. So so it's it's been it's been in me forever. I just uh, I love it. I love the storytelling. I love the pretending. And uh, you got into acting in school. Was there like drama class, a teacher that encouraged you or something? Definitely drama class. I did a lot of it on my own, though. When I told my mom, I was probably about 12 or 13. I was like, I'm, I'm going to be an actor. And she's like, good luck with that. And I was like, oh. <laughs> and what was the first thing <laughs> Where, you landed? Where's the help? So I, I actually, again, dating myself, I called on a like rotary dial phone actra and i was like how do i get an agent and so they snail mailed me a list of like a typewritten list of agents that were in the city and i just called one after another when i was 12 and i can't imagine these people answering the phone to a 12 year old like yeah honey <laughs> yeah. but I, I ended up landing a an agent who got me mostly extra work and for the first you know maybe five or six years of my career i was just visiting sets as an extra and, and getting to know paying your the dues in other outs. words oh, right? kind of yeah, yeah working my way getting up. the experience you have to start small and eventually you know you well, think big well that's it right it's it's the hustle so you're you're doing everything and you're trying to sort of make this work on the side mm-hmm. um my first actual role where i got uh, a credit i played a mental patient in a made for tv movie mm-hmm. which is pretty fucking epic oh, wait, you <laughs> played one i am one <laughs> right <laughs> well that was the ongoing joke that was it really acting well, <laughs> i gotta see that i gotta see that it was send a, me that clip i will definitely send you that clip it was so much fun and so basically they just dragged me down a hallway while i was screaming and you know a nurse was trying to calm me down we probably did about six or seven takes but each time i would have to walk up the hallway and there was this lady like chasing me with slippers like she just wanted to take care of me and I guess it was her job to like make sure I had slippers on my feet and mm-hmm. I'm not a, a girl that likes to be pampered and yeah. so I was like no I, I'm really okay like I can I can just put, just, just put them on <laughs> okay so put on the fluffy slippers and then play the mental patient <laughs> but uh, it was it was tremendous fun yeah you really get into your roles I find like like everybody that I've met you're like top tier when it comes to acting oh, thank you top tier and you recently told me about some role that you did uh, it was like some futuristic movie and you had to do some extreme shit in it that I think should be mentioned on this show. That's funny. So I, I, we filmed um, in, I guess, 2018, all in green screen, a dystopian sort of futuristic um, world gone bad. Kind Cyberpunk of. type of life. Yeah. yeah. And so I got the good fortune, because I think it's awesome, to play um, a prison um a prisoner of war, prisoner of war. And I basically just got my ass kicked the entire time that I was filming. So I got um, electrocuted and whipped and punched and thrown to the ground and spit on. And it was just so much fun. I mean, yeah, that sounds like <laughs> a good time <laughs> where, I, where I'm Don't from. threaten me with a good time, you know what I'm saying? Like, how are you doing? <laughs> no, but actor-wise, like, I like that stuff, stunts and, and, yeah. and that kind of thing. I, I train in boxing as well. So to be able to, to just do this physical role right, right. and to be able to portray something that, that people have actually gone through. To, in order to prepare for this movie, the director actually had us sit down and watch um, torture videos. Jesus from like south korea and fr- yeah it was it was That's intense, intense. Like, intense. <laughs> it was intense it's not quite to that degree but enough that i was like i had i i had feelings about it afterwards <laughs> i was For like sure. wow it was intense but he would actually like stop things and rewind and like did you hear that sound did you hear that guttural cry that's what i want when you get whipped and so i would i would sort of practice it and so i think what you're referring to is that i i like to be always prepared yeah no i think and it's I, uh, you're you're very method when you come to it you're not gonna give a half-assed performance i try not to i try to be really all. prepared and hit yeah. my emotional markers and just be i don't want to be that person that's like causing the delay on set or i don't want to be that person ever like i cringe so i, I want to like i'm gonna know my shit i'm gonna come in i'm gonna be ready so when you prepared you like prepare at home and like freak out your neighbors with the like intense <laughs> yeah, screaming I didn't like, think of that. what's going on there have the cops ever showed up like <laughs> no um i tend to do she goes to the woodshed in the backyard. Yeah, <laughs> neighbors are calling no, the it's, cops. No, it's embarrassing, like, but I, I tend to do it in the bathtub. I tend to prepare, do all my, my preparing in the bath because that's when the kids leave me alone. That's my only sort of alone time. And so I do it very non-verbally, but I'm trying to hit emotional cues. 
Um, because in acting, you, you, you learn that, you know, you don't just cry here because the script calls for it or you're feeling an emotion. And if, if tears come, then great. But if not, you don't force it because there's nothing worse than seeing an actor on screen like, <laughs> like trying to force out a tear and you're like, bro, like just, like, you know. Stick to your day job. <laughs> sort of like, well, you're clearly not feeling it. And mm -hmm. if you're not feeling it, I'm not feeling it. Mm -hmm. So I, I really practice emotional cues um, in the script. And so like, I know if at, at this point I would, I the character would probably cry, then I sort of practice that emotional cue, that physical yeah. sort of cues. When you cry, you know, I don't, you maybe cry more than, than you guys, because. Yeah, no, I, I cry, cry every day, cry, man. <laughs> Why do crier. I have to be the weak link? <laughs> Just because as women, we can't control it, I find. And it's not, it's not a question of being sexist or weaker. I just, I cry sometimes and it's, it's awful, but it, it, it is. It just, I mean, it I, is. I yeah. cried on the way the here. Money, you know, like. <laughs> <laughs> but when you, but when you start to cry, you have physical cues, like the roof of your mouth start, you, like there's a pull here. So I've really tried to study those physicalities that change when, when I'm having an emotion. One, it helps me deal with the emotion, but two, it, it helps me prepare for acting later on. And then I try and sort of mimic those physical cues and it, it helps bring on. Yeah, I'm trying. <laughs> the emotion. But like if ever your kids were to walk into the bathroom during one of these bathtub sessions, they may they may be traumatized. Like what's what's I going, think they know by what's now. going on they, with mom right now? You know, I'm so wacky in general. And I, I mean, as an actor, we're just we're sort of nuts anyway. So my kids are used to me and they probably wouldn't be shocked at all. They'd walk in. They'd be like, oh, God, here she's, she's, she's doing Showing that stuff again. You know? <laughs> yeah, they, they get embarrassed mostly. Do they have any aspirations of becoming an actor? Not at all. Not at all. Seriously? No, I've no. scared them away from. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> they they don't want to be what I am. <laughs> I recently saw your uh, that play you were in with uh, John Wilson. Okay. I've done a couple of plays with John Wilson actually. That play that you showed me, I forgot what it was called, but it was amazing. I really liked the. When the I played the European like the, yeah, the European yeah 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 that was called um, a comedy of tenors. A comedy of tenors. Yeah. Is it coming back? I don't think so. No. <laughs> <laughs> it was it was tremendous fun. It was actually dir directed by uh, Genty Benko, who's I'm gonna he's from overseas, and I'm gonna get his country wrong, so I'm not gonna try. But he's a famous actor where he's from, and he's immigrated here and uh, is making a name for himself. But tremendous fun because he brought just a completely different view to how theater was done. He brought the European way of doing. He it. did, and it, it, the, their their sense of comedy is different. And so a lot of us actors were really put off and we're like, I don't know what's happening and I don't know what we're doing. And we didn't think we had a show. And then we, we put on the show and people loved it. And I was like, wow, it was because it was just not a comedy that I had ever done. Yeah, I wasn't but. I wasn't expecting it. Uh, there was a lot of elements that really made me laugh. John was amazing in it. Uh, that girl hiding in the couch. Yes. Uh, Melissa. the the maestro or whatever the italian dude him yeah. he was badass i liked him yeah we had we had fun theater is great theater is a completely different beast than than film yeah that was my next question like which which do you prefer and like how do they how do they differ for like morons like me who don't know the difference like how <laughs> like what's what, i don't know? think not having knowledge of something makes you moron okay well <laughs> but, you're, but you're nice. let's just let's just <laughs> stick with moron <laughs> Um, th they're completely different beasts. So, and and I I can't pick between them. I I love going back and forth and being able to do both of them because they they both bring their benefits and their and their sort of drawbacks. But with live theater, you just never know what the fuck's gonna happen, and that is scary. Like you were saying about the podcast, it's exciting, but it's scary, and and that's what live theater is because you can you rehearse the show for three months and you've got it down, but as soon as you touch that stage, you don't know what's gonna happen. And you don't know if Joe Blow over there is gonna remember his line or not, and you've just gotta be ready. And one of the, the theater shows that I had done, not the, not the comedy of tenors, but one similarly, uh, we had two actors that were struggling all the way through rehearsals with their lines, and I was like, oh my God, like what's gonna happen? It's gonna be a disaster. It's gonna be awful. And we start the show, and this guy who's playing my husband, who has been on point the entire rehearsal process, skips four pages of dialogue. Mm. 
And it's at one of these these moments where the scene is like us here and another couple there and it's going back and forth. And so the lighting crew is going back and forth and he skips four pages of dialogue. The lighting crew is like, they don't know what the fuck's good. So the lights are just going off and on. No. And like the actors are scrambling because we know we got to bring it back. And it was just, it was a oh, wow. train wreck. It wasn't, but so you get off and you're just sort of like electrically like, what the fuck the just happened? Like, it, was, yeah. it was so much fun. And the audience has no clue. They just think the lighting guy is like drunk. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah was, so so theater has that that live component and then also you, you get that sort of if you tell a joke you get that immediate right. response from yeah. from the audience and that gives you like a charge and so it, it sorry <laughs> it's like a sitcom yeah. it's like the sitcom when you hear the the laugh track yeah it, it sort of propels it, you yeah. through right it gives you this energy boost whereas film is very technical so it's a lot of sitting around and waiting and then it's a lot of like okay be sad but there's a camera like right there but pretend it's not <laughs> okay <laughs> like, so it's but it's more intimate though because if you can if you can get outside of all the, the creative stuff that's happening if you can just really get in your bubble it's so much more intimate and there's there's something palpable about the electricity like when we shot that scene yeah um the scene where you're crying yeah yeah for your 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 dad just died and you start crying so yeah he, he writes this beautiful scene where my father has died and I, I i didn't get to say goodbye to him and then i find i stumble upon this video where he's sort of giving me this goodbye and that I practiced that those emotional markers for months on that. Fantastic, <laughs> amazing. But it's just after we filmed the scene, like we cut, and it was almost sort of this like, I don't know, it, it, there was this energy. There was there was like no one wanted to speak, like no one wanted to break it. And yeah, it was like a quiet in the room. Yeah. And I think it just was, it was so impactful, and everybody was left in awe. I hope it hopefully like, translates to film because I haven't yeah, seen no, it, it yet. We, but saw, it we saw that scene. It looked very, very good. And once we yelled cut, it was just like a dead silence. The residual room. energy. Yeah. yeah and it was, so oh, you don't really get that from theater because even if you're having an, an intense moment, you still have someone like, <clears throat> or like someone shifting in their seat with the creak. So you, you never quite get that, that mm. moment. But they both bring such fun energy and, and such... I don't know. Good Life. vibes. Good yeah, vibes. exactly. I was going to ask you, so as an actor, what's your favorite genre or a genre you want to get into of like movies, like comedy, horror, thriller? What, what, what's something you love working with and something you want to work in? That's, that's a fair question. So I never thought I was a comedic an actor. I never, like, I'm not funny. I'm very, I take things very seriously. I'm very structured. Um, recently, I've just been exploring that and, and having sort of some, some sex, se sexes, Ooh. no, <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> some successes um, w with sort of the comedic side of myself. So that's been fun to explore. Um, what I really enjoy, though, is that that physicality, like that that girl that's that's training or fighting or like I like stunting. I like the strong women characters, like the adrenaline rush, like kind of, yeah, and and it was something where I can sort of challenge myself uh, in personally also. Um, but I, I tend to really get cast a lot of these emotional and crazy people also. So that's fun for me. It's sort of therapeutic to be able to work through some of your <laughs> your life <laughs> shit on camera, you know, and then people appreciate it. It's really great. So I, I yeah. I, I like anything though. I'm, I'm anything is a challenge, but I'm, I don't see myself doing the romantic comedies or no. like it's, it's about like a Hallmark movie. Like I would, I just don't tend to get brought in for them, and I don't, I don't cast Honestly, them. Honestly, they're so trash. They don't, like they're, they're they don't so see bad. me as the that girl, and that's fine. The Christmas I'd Hallmark kick her movies. Ass anyway. <laughs> Terrible. That's a fact. Yeah, the Hallmark movies are a little... It's the worst acting, the cheesiest, like, storyline. My mom watches them all the time, and I'm See, like... See, but there's like, a market. Because they make you feel good, yeah, right? You watch them, and you're like, five-year-old women that are, like, depressed <laughs> and have five cats. Yeah, okay, there's your market. But what's one you would want to get into, like, other than, uh, you were saying comedy, but have you done, like, horror, sci-fi? I've never done a horror, and I would love to do... Yeah, maybe. So. You gotta write a scene over here. Right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I already told him he means to write me like a G.I. Jane kind of. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm looking I for can that. see yeah. it. Like badass alpha female character. Yes, right? Yeah. yeah that's. Well, we have the Can't Stop the Hustle coming up. Yeah. And, you, and you do a 
point the gun at somebody and it, you have a crazy intense moment in that one so yeah, it's, yeah, it's gonna be great i can't wait for it and he actually is playing co alongside you in the movie that's awesome yeah i'm, I'm psyched i wanted to be the in shit it out of me though to be honest with you i'm not gonna lie because when i when i when i went into the audition this is a funny ass <laughs> you're you're after her yeah yeah no, not only was i <clears throat> not only was i after you but I don't have the experience that you have. So the like the, the scene that I had to read for the audition, I just interpreted as anger. So I just went in and pretty much yelled at Steve for my entire <laughs> audition. And he was like, dude, like, take it down a notch, <laughs> take five, come back, like, relax. You know, like, it's not an angry scene, but I just interpreted it as, yeah. as me fucking being angry. So I just literally went in and yelled at Steve. And then um, when he told me I got the part, I was happily surprised. And um, he, he had showed me some some of your work, like just I'm not I can't even remember what it was, but you had shown me like a scene that she had done or something like that. I, I was, think it's once we like figured out what the cast was. Right. I showed you her take of the. Yeah, and I was just she, like, like, holy dude, shit. like, holy shit. Like she she's like the real deal. I got to like I, I got to go home and do some practicing my, myself. Really. Yeah, but you, it's, it's natural for you as well. You know, it, it just comes out good. I hope you're well. I mean, the, the part I'm playing is not really acting. You know what I mean? Like, no, it's. <laughs> You, yeah, it's a rapper. There's a lot of elements he, that he cast hit home. me in a movie to play myself. There you go. At this point. <laughs> Do you know what though? There, it's it's still acting, and there's still the the technical aspect, and y you're not gonna be you because you're yeah. you've been written words that are not yours. Exactly. So as much as you're familiar with the character, and you you have you know aspects that you can bring to it, it's still acting. So don't. For sure. Don't you gotta cry, I don't forget. You gotta cry. Hey, I cried on cue with, with what's her name in your kitchen. Yeah, don't you don't good, forget. Give me nice. my credit. <laughs> god damn it. I, I just I just I went to the sorrow. I love it. Oh god. <laughs> you know? You channeled it. Yeah. I, I wanted to be in that movie, but then you told me I had to like date tech or something. There's a scene, <laughs> and that, I was there's like, a scene no, no, that no. You would have to kiss him. So. And I was like, yeah, yeah I'll, look, I'll, I'll, I'll pass. <laughs> Maybe if there's another role where I don't have to touch I'll super pass on that. We're good. Yeah, we'll figure something out. So I Lisa, get the chemistry between you guys. Is <laughs> <laughs> so Lisa, you do the th you've done the theatrical, you've done the indie features and stuff like that. Yeah. I know you recently got casted as Woodsy Woman <laughs> on a certain movie called Home Alone. Ooh. How was that? <laughs> it was a nice that was, little that tidbit. That was an epic downgrade. Is what that was. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I was super excited because casting reached out to me and they're like, we have this super small role. It's called Woodsy Woman. Basically, she just needs to decorate Woodsy Man because he's got a role, but he needs a wife. But we were thinking of you and I was like, me? Wow. Thanks, guys. Like, that's so that's so nice that you thought of me. And so I, I get there and like they're like, yeah, you're Woodsy Woman. Great. And we, we dress me all up. And then like they just decided, you know what? He doesn't need a wife. Uh. So <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, oh. Okay. <laughs> they're like, Whoa, you, you can just be an extra, like in the, in the back. I hope you got your own trailer though. And I did not. Like, yeah. I, I was. It was an epic downgrade. So thank you for bringing. That up. I didn't know that. <laughs> Good old Steve. So man. deep. Old Steve. No, you know what? It happens though. It it happens, and it's it's part of the game. And I have as much fun on set. Well, not as much fun, but I have I have fun on set, whether I'm an extra or whether I've got a part and whether I'm being pampered or whether I'm being ignored. It's it, it's just part of the, that magic, you know, so it is what it is. What's the biggest pampered moment that you've had on set? Oh, goodness. What film was Minus it? Minus the slippers. <laughs> right. <laughs> that was probably the biggest <laughs> pampered I've had on set. Um, I played a nurse in one TV movie. I wasn't super pampered, though. <laughs> I wasn't super pampered. But I, I did have my own trailer, and it was awesome. But I had, like, two scenes, and so the first chunk of my scenes were filming at, like, 7 at night, which were great. And they're like, we're going to need you to take a little break, and we'll call you back. And it was, like, 3 a.m. when they were ready for my for my second scene, and I basically had to chase these bad guys out of the hospital. And But from 7 to, to 3, I get sleepy. So, so I fell asleep in my trailer but I fell asleep like on something and so they came to get me and I had like all the, the marks and the lady production she like knocks and I was like hey and uh, I'm okay and she's like you need to go to makeup right now and I was like <laughs> okay so, so they were really nice to me and like I you know the lady was giving me a massage at the same time and like doing my makeup and so I felt I felt pampered but I also felt like yeah, I'm yeah you're, I'm you're cutting person. it close like, yeah I, I, I did bad so, but no, I'm, I'm not a pampered girl. I don't seek it out. I don't enjoy it. It makes me uncomfortable. I don't so. speak for yourself. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I can re 
respect the people that can appreciate it. I just, I don't know. I guess because I'm a mom, I'm, I'm used to sort of just taking care all the time and, and, and yeah. being the caretaker that when I'm cared for, yeah. yeah, I feel like I'm, I'm missing my job somehow. I'm like, no, no, I should be doing that. I know what you mean. <laughs> <laughs> all your kids keeping you busy. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, what are you talking about, bro? <laughs> no, you don't. You have no idea, bro. No, I don't. <laughs> But you have kids. I you sure as hell you understand do. Yeah. What that's they, they keep me on my toes, to say the least. No doubt. Yeah. I heard you saying that you're you're in bed early these days. I was like, I'm I'm in bed as soon as I can. Oh I man, can, McGee. I, can't, I can't even stay up for like a UFC main event anymore. It's terrible. Like by the time they're in sleep, uh, asleep, I make all these grandiose plans. I'm gonna you know do this and do that, and then fucking I'm just on the couch. No kidding. Yeah. Out. Out. Yeah. yeah, that happened to be the last main event. Actually, I woke up after the main event. Wow. Oh, yeah. So pissed. Yeah, it's so sucks. pissed. Right? It's so getting old. You yeah. guys talk all your shit on the podcast about fighting and all that <laughs> stuff. You can't even <laughs> stay up to watch it. Yeah. What the hell? Holler at me in 10 years when you have kids and we'll see who's talking. Who said I'm going to have kids in 10 years? I want to be the cool aunt, you know, that shows up to every family event. Well, drunk. you got to get you got to be cool first. <laughs> wow. See, chemistry. Yeah. Just, so yeah. Lisa. Yes. Do you think it was easier as a younger actor middle-aged actor or do you think once you hit the the older years that's where you're going to pick up your steam and really get things rolling because i i noticed that there's a s specific actors that are they hit their prime at a certain age right there's uh, so many people that started getting into the game around 40s 50s and you didn't hear anything about them before yeah so i think there's a, a chance that you might be the next the uh, <laughs> next big thing Bless your heart, yeah. from your lips to God's ears. Um, for me in particular, it's been interesting just because of my personal life has sort of kept me from, from pursuing things 100% or from being able to dedicate as much of my energy as I could. I got pregnant relatively quickly out of, out of theater school and the relationship I was in was not the most conducive to me having creative freedom, mm -hmm. let's say. Um, but they also say that it takes 20 years to be an actor. Yeah. And we, we were taught that and you sort of laugh it off, but I think it's true. And I think it's, it's a question of coming into your own. You know, when you're in your 20s, you're sort of discovering yourself. You're trying to separate from, from your family and from what they've told you you should be. And you're, you're, you're trying to find yourself. Um, and I, th I think that's true throughout your 30s also. You know, you've got a little bit better handle of it. But now that I've hit 40 and, and, and beyond, um, I, I've realized that I'm getting to a point where I'm, I'm just I'm comfortable with myself. You know, I've, I've been giving myself permission to sort of be who I am and be okay with that. And I think that gives you a confidence that, that comes across better. So I, I think your successes are not necessarily because you're older, but just because you've, you've gotten to a certain point where you're... Secure with yourself. Secure with yeah. yourself. You're comfortable. I, I agree. In, and I would think that would make acting probably a lot easier as well, right? I think so, because when I first started out, I've always wanted to do this, Like I, but when I first started out, I, I would sit in an audition room and I would be so sick, and I'd be sitting there going like, why am I here, what am I doing, like I don't want to be here, I'm just going to vomit, Like, and, and they call me in and I'd be like, hi, <laughs> <laughs> and I'd do my audition and I know I'm doing it like this and I'm just so happy to be here, and like, okay, and then you leave and I'm like, wow, I think that went really well, <laughs> yeah, I'm so proud of myself, and then I reflect and I'm like, Maybe not. Yeah, it <laughs> like, came off a bit too strong. Maybe, <laughs> you know. So just I th doing things over and over again is... is mm -hmm. That's what you told me. When I yeah. asked you, what's the key to becoming a successful actor? You're like, just keep repeating the, the fucking lines. The key for everything. Anything you want to be good at and it is repetition. Yeah, it's true. Do it over and over and over again. You hear like the greatest football players. He's like, when I was 16, I was, I, you know, I would throw the football and have to catch it 50 times or 500 drills, times, drills, you know, drills. and they were self-motivated and they were yeah. self-governing. But when you do things over and over and over again, you can't help but get better at it. Yeah. And so over the, the course of the years, I've just auditioned over and over again where I got to a point where I'm like, I don't give a shit. You know, some days I go in and I don't feel good and I don't feel, but I'm going to come in and I'm going to, but I, I don't have as much vested in it. I, I look at it as a chance to, to repeat, a chance to practice, a chance to, to perform. And so changing that mindset has, has made a difference too. You relish the moment. Yeah. yeah. And people will tell you that when you're 20, but you can't, you can't just make a change because someone's told you even if you know in your heart that they're right you have to get to that place by yourself That's and true. and That's true. we all get to to where we're going at different stages and it depends on so many other factors and what's going on and you know what you're sensitive to 
but uh, yeah, so I, I think it does take at least 20 years to be become a real actor because of life. Yeah. And as far as uh, working in the city, how is it with the unions and non-union? And I know it's a tricky situation. <laughs> it, is, it is tricky, and it's sort of a heated topic for me because I get I get flustered. There, <sighs> when I first started out, it was like, "What's the rule? What's the project?" Those were the first questions because you wanted to create and you wanted to tell this story. Now the first question is always union or non-union. Yeah, always union or non-union. And it's about the business, and we've sort of squashed that create, that creative flow and that, that ability to collaborate with other creatives regardless of what they've done before. And that's what the union, I feel, has made it. And I love my union, and I, I appreciate how much they've fought for us, and, and th the rights that we have are incredible. But there's restrictions that, that go along with it, too, and I feel like those restrictions are stifling the creativity it's a double-edged sword it absolutely is like i couldn't wait to get in the union I, because that was like sort of you've made it like you've you had your credits you you were part of the like you're a paid actor and as soon as i got in the union i stopped working i was like where is all the because you're now in a pool with all these experienced right. well-rounded actors and you have to now fight them for the roles yeah. versus before it was just you know anyone who enjoyed creating so I, f I find that difficult and and I don't like having to pick and choose what I do creatively because of business yeah. so I, I struggle with that a little bit and I, I try and be creative as much as possible without you know going against the the, the specific union yeah. rules it, it's touchy though it's, it's a gray area and it's something that that I will at some point fight for but I'm hesitant to start the battle because I don't want to draw attention to myself and the fact that I have this issue, which, <laughs> but oh, yeah, I was gonna, I was like, gonna say. you don't want to be the martyr. Over here. Well, you know, I mean, I think it's a conversation that we do need to have though. So, because I, I don't think the union's goal is to stifle it. I think the union is trying to protect the actors and protect, you know, us. I just think we need to revisit sort of some of the rules and yeah. some of the guidelines that go with it because I think you know stopping people from creating just because I'm in the union and you're not I don't think we're, we're doing anyone any service mm -hmm. there so yeah that's my that's my view on that have you ever taken on a role or done a project that you really did not want to do but you did it because a the money was good and it was a union project and you're like I feel like I have to do it to please the my agent or no. Mm. No, I've done <laughs> I've done things I'm not overly like want to show people <laughs> necessarily. Like I don't go out of my way to be like, "Hey, this is me." Yeah. Um, but I no. Not to say that I wouldn't. Okay. And I I, I can't lie. Like at, at this point in my career and at this point in my life, if I was offered something that I was less than enthused about, but it was I would probably do it. Because I I want the experience, I want the networking, I want the credit, I want I want that for my demo. It would have to be, I would have to yeah, it would decide have to be case by case, though. Like, it would have to be something really humiliating to say no. Like, well, ah, I mean, you got to walk around in a hot dog costume. and I mean, that, that, You know, that doesn't bother me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. But I feel like you dropped two mil on me. I'm Liberace. Like, <laughs> right? Up, like, yeah. <laughs> Embarrassing is, is less my, my issue, but I have kids that I need to consider. Yeah, that's true. You don't want so, them to like, get embarrassed. You know, something overly sexual or, or yeah. overly, you know, victimized just for the sake of the story, but doesn't, you know, doesn't lead anything to it. I think those I would have to, to visit project by project just mostly because i know my, my children have access to all this and you know for my own personal self also no, it's a smart choice i try, I try to be smart <laughs> don't we all <laughs> it's not always the case but no. <laughs> i'm looking at you tech <laughs> so what's uh what's next in the works what do we have cooking well i just actually wrote my first short film Ooh. yeah so that's in its second draft and i because it's my first writing, I, I know that I've got to, you know, sort of visit and revisit. I didn't realize how much work went into the actual writing part. Yeah, it's a, it gets a little... Uh, I, I have a newfound respect. Because I, I had written before, but I never tried to write like an, okay, I'm going to write a script that we're actually going to shoot. You know, so I was super proud of myself and I had my idea and I like sat down for two days and I, I wrote out my 15 pages and I sent it to to someone I knew. <laughs> and I was waiting for like, wow, that was a great job. And he came back with like... Maybe we can meet for coffee, and <laughs> and I could talk to you about you know some of the things that I've learned. And I was like, 
okay. Okay, all right. <laughs> I'm, I'm open. I hear what you're throwing down. And so we went for coffee, and he sat for two hours with me, and he dissected everything. And I learned so much about what I had done wrong <laughs> in this first attempt. Um, but it, it was incredibly wonderful of him to give me that time and, and that experience. Um, you're, you're very much like that also. You're, you're just very giving with your experience. I try. Your... I try. No, oh, but... he's blushing. <laughs> <laughs> no but that's one of the first things you guys are funny with your water breaks <laughs> they're, they're like exclamation marks just saying like, things <laughs> um yeah that's one of the first things i was um, i digress now i don't even know what we were talking about but <laughs> i'm a very kind person and i give good comments <laughs> that's, that's where he's leading going. her back to the compliments so you're talking about your screenplay and that oh like yeah so i just yeah i'm i'm fortunate that i have a lot of a lot of people in my circle that get shit done and I'm attracted to that type of personality and that's sort of the people I seek out and I want to collaborate with and I want to network with is the people that get shit done. And so that's... We get shit done here. That, yes, that's what we do. you do. Yeah. 9.30 <laughs> in the morning type <laughs> thing. Unfortunately, there's that project that... The first project that we talked about, it's still in limbo because of we had the restrictions and yep. everything. But now that we did those two short films, we're going to get back on track with that and you're going to give us that stellar performance that we're waiting for. I, you know... A heroin addict <laughs> it's gonna be <laughs> awesome um it was funny though when we because we had just sort of first met when yeah. when that audition came to be and i think that was the first time we met yeah, in, person, in person was at that audition yeah. but i had reached out to to steve i think he was i think you were casting for like a music video or something is how we had first connected uh, I can't remember on Facebook. I think I think that was the thing, and I, he was probably asking for like a 25 year old, and I'm like, I could do that because <laughs> I forget that I'm 42 a lot. Um, and he was like very kind, like, yeah, no, we've already cast it and whatever. And then I, I saw something later on about your casting for the movie, and so I was like, hey, anything for me in there? And I I, I don't think you saw me as the actor I was then because no. you're like as uh, soon as you sent that tape in though <laughs> everything changed. He's like, yeah, I don't really, I mean, you could be the waitress or the hostess or whatever. He's like, I do have one, like, heroin addict if you wanted to. Just, and I was like, mm? wow. I was like, I do crazy, actually. So, the yes. Thing is, <laughs> I do crazy. The thing is, it's not that I, I didn't want to give you the role of the heroin addict. It's at that point when I just wrote that first script, I'm thinking nobody wants to play this role. I don't want to be a fucking heroin addict. And you, that's, the, oh, I, was, I jumped that back. I was yeah. like, yes, I do. Because <laughs> I, because I want to explore characters that I, I am not, mm -hmm. right? Like I'm, it's all fun and, and, and good to play characters that you're familiar with and, and you bring a benefit to that. But you also learn so much about yourself when you're exploring characters that are completely opposite from you because there are still components in there that are you and there are still, you still have to find these, we call them as ifs. Mm -hmm. So when you're playing a scene, like if you're playing something futuristic and you're like, I have to save the world, I can't relate to that at all. So I have to find an as if. What is as important to me as saving the world? And so I would be like, my kids are dying and I need to save my kids. All of a sudden, shit gets real. Yeah. And so you, you have to find your, your as ifs. So being able to find these, these as ifs with colorful characters that I, I love playing those, those characters because you, it's, they're real people. So how did this person get to be we where know, they yeah, are? Yeah, we talked and about the backstory and everything. Yeah, and so I was like, I was super stoked that you let me audition, and I was that was one where I was like, I'm getting it, like I I want this, I'm getting it, and I <laughs> I went in so prepared, and it was the first time ever where you had come in to get me, and I was like, could I just have a second? Because I wanted to really get there, and I really wanted to nail it, and I had always been told that you're allowed to take your time, and casting wants you, but you, again, I don't want to be that person that's yeah, like causing delays, process, and I don't so. want to be like. I need a minute. Like, I don't want to be that prima donna. But in this moment, I was like, I just I just needed to get in the headspace. And can I just have a second? And it, it paid off, I think, because it truly <laughs> did. It was fun. Yeah. I left there feeling good. <laughs> I was like, yeah, I could have played that role. <laughs> <laughs> and you know how I got there? You tried casting me to kiss freaking oh. tech. <laughs> my whole life flashed before my Hilarious. eyes. I'm a heroin addict now. I can see I that. Played that. I'll role. sell you heroin if it'll if it'll <laughs> shut you up for five minutes. I mean, we'll talk after the We're show. We're getting to that time of the day. The interview is almost up. But, Tally, I think you know what you got to do. Oh, I almost forgot about you the gem. You have to take this. Drop a gem on him. Hold it. Lisa, <laughs> what happens now? You hold this gem and you give a piece of advice, some wisdom, some knowledge, some, some tidbit of advice to the actors out there, to the hustlers out there to better their game. Oh, Something, goodness. Yeah. 
You could have given me a heads up on this. Oh, no, no, no. This is on the spot stuff. On the spot. We're live. If you've seen our podcast, you would know. You know, I watched most of the beginnings of them, but I don't get to the end of anything. (laughs) (laughs) Totally fair. Uh, You know what? I would say, uh, (laughs) fuck. I got you. (laughs) Absolutely. Um, You never regret the things you don't try and don't give up. You, you gotta you gotta think outside the bubble you gotta work your tail off and you gotta keep your eye on the prize because i mean ultimately you want to get to where you're going y- you gotta work you gotta get there no one's gonna come take you by the hand and and bring you right it's a fact so you just gotta keep on trudging even when it, it feels like you're not getting anywhere you heard it cue the horns <laughs> beep, 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 beep. i actually have it on my phone give me a second oh she, she's she got a horn sound effect here <laughs> I was actually going to add it in post. But yeah, I'm that's like, so it. much better than us doing it without <laughs> yeah. us. We've been doing it for like, what, the last 11 episodes? All right, guys. Move it up. That, that's the end of the episode. Thank you very much for watching another episode of the Hustle Podcast. Welcome, everybody. Y'all ready for this? The Hustle. My name is Steve Armopoulos, and these are my co-hosts. I'm Talia. And I'm Tech Luciano. You may have heard me on radio. You may have never heard of me at all, but that's okay. Because y'all going to learn today. Your whole life was a struggle. Had to make it out the this is a show for you. Welcome to the hustle. Under pressure, never break a foe. Keep chasing your goals until you blow. Now, welcome to the hustle. Take money, make money, build a future forever. Even in stormy weather, we execute them for treasure. The ground is real, you know. Got the willpower. Terrace, how we hustle and flow. Rain, sleep, or snow. The odds against me for sure. I kicked